and Eve and the fall of man that happened there. But after Genesis, we come to um, the book of Exodus. And we're in Exodus chapter 2 tonight, and we're reading um, verses number 1 and 2 for our consideration. And the Bible says, Now a man from the family of Levi married a Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. And if you get from, from that scripture, should let you know that our, our person of discussion on tonight is a man by the name of Moses. Somebody been to Sunday school, yes. Yeah. So, so we're talking about a man by the name of Moses. If I was the Bible study, we have fun on tonight. We know that the, um, we know that he had his parents. His parents by the name of Amram and Jochebed. And he had an older sister by the name of Miriam. And he had a brother whose name was Aaron. And he, Aaron was three years older than he was at the time. And his mother hid him by faith. Could you imagine what it took for a mother to take her son that she had just born? And out of the best intentions for his life to blindly take your child and put him in a basket and sail him down the river just hoping that things were going to turn out for the best for him. Could you imagine what kind of faith that took for her? And Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23 lets us know that she did that by faith. For the Hebrew writer lets us know in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 23, he says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Now see, I just want to pause here for a moment and say that's what I love about the word of God. That you can go to the beginning of scripture to come to bear to almost to the end and you can connect the dots of what God's plan is for our life. So so it refused the idea that the word of God was just something that somebody threw together. Because how can you tell me that thousands of years before this ever took place, that somebody was going to know in depth exactly of how it was going to take place. Another example that we have with that is we will look at the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter number 58 where he talks about the wounded Savior and the suffering that he was going to have to experience. And it depicted the suffering of Jesus down to the teeth of everything it was that he had to deal with. So they hid him for three months. And I just say again, could you imagine what it took for a mother, for his mother, to put him in there, to throw her son out there in the water, knowing that Pharaoh's daughter or his people could easily destroy her son's life. It wasn't a guarantee that they were just going to be friendly and benevolent and, and take the child in. They could have actually did away with that child. So she acted by faith. Now, according because they were Hebrews, they had faith in God that he would be okay. And let me tell you, that's something. When you got faith in God, you'll be okay in some of the craziest of situations. In situations that throw other people in an uproar and in a frenzy. When you have faith in God, when you have true trust in Him, you can stand during the day of testing. You can take a couple punches. You might get knocked down from time to time, but you'll get right back up and keep on going as long as you have true faith in God. And we can see the providence of God in the life of Moses. And we can see the providence of God at work in these verses because that saved the life of Moses. You can't tell me God didn't have a hand in Come this. On now. You can't tell me that God didn't have a hand. She putting this boy in a river full of crocodiles and all kinds of other things that could have got to Moses. She put her child in the middle of danger, hoping that her child was going to have a better outcome. And what I love about God is that when God sees the child of God acting by faith, that God will always bless that child of God. God will always honor faith because God not only blessed that woman to be able to take care of her child, but God allowed her to get paid for taking care of her child. I don't hear nobody. I don't hear nobody. We serve a God. God was so good that he not only gave her the benefit of being able to work and be there to raise and train her child, but she got paid to do it at the same time. Oh, my God. So, Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning at verse number 5. I'm um, going down to verse number nine, a very familiar passage of scripture. It says that you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house 
When you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and even on your gates. We go over to Ephesians chapter number 6. Beginning at verse number one, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is what? Right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in training and the admonition of the Lord. Now, they learn to honor children, learn to honor their mother, their mother and their father by being taught. Yeah. That's how it happens. It doesn't come by instinct. You have to be taught that. We have to be taught how to worship God. We have to be taught how to live for him in and of ourselves by our own. We don't know what to do. That's why we need to be taught how to do these things so that we can live the life that God has called for us to live. Eli was a godly man, but he failed to teach his children about God. He did all of these wonderful things, but he never took the time to teach his children about the one God that created the universe. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12 lets us know. It says, now the sons of Eli were corrupt. Why? Because they did not fear the Lord. They were corrupt, he says, because they did not fear the Lord. So that lets us know for those that have a hand in raising somebody up, you need to teach them about God. You need to teach them about God. You need to teach them what God's will is for their life and how God would have for them to live. Now, the Bible does not give us a lot of detail about the first 40 years of Moses' life. It's like he just disappears for a little while and then he shows up, got a little gray in his beard and, you know, his hairline is receding, you know, whatever, eyesight getting a little bad, whatever. But uh, at this time, and, and it skips, and now we find Moses um, in verses 11 through 15, we learn that Moses visits his people and he sees how harsh they are being treated and when he sees one of the Egyptian men be beating a Hebrew like he killed the Egyptian and then he buries him in the sand and y'all know it lets us know that Moses thought didn't nobody see him what he was doing or whatever until a man came and told him hey I saw you now, now I saw you might not have thought nobody saw you but I saw exactly what it is that you have done and he thought he thought that he had managed to get away with that thing but knew y'all don't news spread fast right news spread news spread real quick and so Moses fled from Pharaoh to the land of Midian he ran away and Stephen gets a little more information about that over in Acts. And again, I love this, how you were in the Old Testament, but we're coming to the New Testament to get some correlation of the things that are going on. So Stephen gives us a little more information in Acts chapter 7, um, beginning at verse number 22. He says, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Paul lets us know in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 26, he says that by faith, Moses, when he came of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passion pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked for his reward. So you can see his mama really had a hand in raising him and he recognized who it was that he belonged to and he recognized where he came from because Moses passed up on all of the good stuff in Pharaoh's house to be who it was that God had called him to be and I wonder so many times we see people of God that are so quick to sell out who it is that God has called them to be so that we can be who it is that we want to be and hold on to the stuff that we want to have but it all plays into walking with God by faith because you realize at the end of the day God has already said I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you to give you a hope and a future and an expected end now where did Moses learn about faith in God his mom that's where he learned about it from. We all know that he learned to have that kind of faith from his mama. And Moses had to make a difficult decision from a worldly point of view. Now, 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 first of all, you have to understand that during this time period, it wasn't the Pharaoh's son 
that would become the next Pharaoh. But it was going to be the Pharaoh's daughter, son, which meant that Moses was in line yep. to be the Pharaoh to have whatever he wanted. But Moses gave all of that up because he had faith in the God that his parents taught them about. I, now, I'm not talking about all these idols and all of these gods and cats and roaches and everything y'all worshiping over here in Egypt. Amen. But he said, I want to worship the one God that my mom has taught me about. Because it wasn't any of these idol gods that saved me when I was floating out there in the water. It was the God of my mother. It was the God of heaven. It was the God that stood out on nothing and called everything to be as it is. I'm talking about the God that said, let there be, and there was. That's the God that I'm talking about. So in Exodus chapter 2, um, and verse number 15, and the latter part of the verse, we learn about the next 40 years of Moses' life. And he ends up getting married to who? Zipporah. A lady by the name of Zipporah. And they had two sons by the name of Gershom and Eliezer. They, they were their two sons. And he works as a shepherd man during these next 40 years. And during this time, Pharaoh wanted to kill him. He died. But then the one that came after him was just as worse as he was. Because he kept the people of God in bondage. And the children of Israel began to cry out to God. And he listens and begins to push his plan into place to free them from their bondage. I just want to pause and ask, is there anybody here glad that when God sees you in a mess and you call out to him, that God comes to rescue those that are in bondage? That there's no snare, that there's no trap, that there's no fix that we can get ourselves in, that God God is not able to pull us up out of it. If he is able to walk in the midst of a fiery furnace and pull three men out as if they had never been in, surely God can pick you up out of whatever it is that you are dealing with today. So he works as a shepherd man. And then and, um, as we get to it in the coming weeks in chapters 3 and 4, we're going to look at the five ways that Moses tried to avoid serving God. You know, we all got excuses when it comes time to serving God, you know. We always got excuses for that. But, but before we do that, I want to make a few comments because Moses is out taking care of animals. When he sees a bush burning, but it does not burn up. Could y'all imagine what kind of sight that was? You'd be like, man, what, what the, was there some bad mushrooms that I had in my salad? Or, 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 or what, what happened? You know, what, what was going on? The bush is burning, but it was not consumed. And, and this point right here, it marks the point of a big change in the life of Moses. And verse number two tells us that the bush is burning. It tells us that it is the angel of the Lord, which we know is a theophanic representation of Jesus Christ before he came in the flesh. And verse four tells us us that God called to Moses from the burning bush. Now I know I'm really tripping. Not only is the bush burning, but it's talking back to me. <laughs> Could y'all see us kicking up dirt trying to get up out of <laughs> Not only is it burning, <laughs> But the bush is also talking to him at the same time. And in verse number 14, God says that I am, which is the same exact statement that Jesus makes over in the New Testament, where he says in John chapter 8 and verse number 58, Jesus said unto them what? Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Yo, that's mighty right there. That those very two words hold so much power and potential in them. God said that before Abraham was even an inkling in his daddy's eye, before his daddy met his mama, I am. I am, meaning I always will be. A constant state of existence. And God wants Moses to deliver a message. He got a message for Moses. God got a message he wants you to deliver too, whether you know it or not. God got a message. God got a message that he wants Moses to deliver to Pharaoh. And that is to go down there, tell Pharaoh, I know he can take your life. I know he can send an army out to take you out. I know he can have you shot down with arrows, but guess what? I want you to go down there and tell him, let my people go. Come on now. 
Let me tell you, child of God, it, if you were going, it took faith to be able to step out and do these things that Moses and people like him did. But let me tell you, if God will never have you to do anything unless God is going to bless you along the journey. Can I tell you, God is not going to send us out there on a thing to do anything unless God is going to give us everything that we need to survive and do what it is that God has called us to do. God is not going to put you out there to fail. God wants you to succeed, not for your glory, but for his glory. All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. That doesn't mean it'll always work out for your personal good. But it's working out for God's redemptive good. So I, was, I said that Moses makes five attempts and then we'll be out. Moses makes five attempts to get out of serving God. The first one is in Exodus chapter 3 in verse number 11. It said, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Maybe Moses' church was remembering back to when one of his own people said, who made you a prince and judge over us? What Moses failed to realize was that God was the one who was going to deliver the children out of Israel. It wasn't going to be Moses. Moses, you are just a vessel. Moses, you are just a man that I am using. But at the end of the day, I am the one that is going to deliver my children out of Israel. And I love how God fixed that thing in such a way that Moses could not get the glory out of it. Because if you go back into the story, you remember that God was leading these people yes. to a place that they were going down yes. to the Red Sea. Uh -huh. And you got them coming down to the Red Sea and God come causes them to go between two rows of mountains. So you got two rows of mountains on either side of you. You look behind you and you got Pharaoh's army and in front of you is the Red Sea. Where you going? Where you going? How are you going to get out? Could you imagine how the people was beginning to fret and to get worried? Man, I can't climb up these walls. I can't swim. I, I, I ain't going to get out there in that water. And look, they're drowning. Uh, they're drowning close behind us. But when you have faith in God, you recognize that if God brought me into this mess, surely God is good enough to bring me out of this mess. And God said, hey, don't worry about how you're going to get out. All I want you to do is stand still and let me do my job. Just sit back and watch me work. And God took a rod and he split a highway through a red sea. So Moses, you can't get no glory. Because I just put a highway 295 through the red sea. You can't, you can't get no glory. All glory belongs to God. And what I love about it, he told Moses in Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 12, I'll surely be with you. Come on, God. Y'all know that's, that's all the assurance I need right there. I can go throughout life as long as God knows I'll surely be with you. The second was in Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 13. It says, then Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 14. Say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. I am is the one that has sent you. Now, after God says that he tells this to Moses, what he wants him to do in the next chapter, he is to go to the elders of the children of Israel and tell them what God's plans were. To set them free or to free them from slavery. And then he is to go to Pharaoh and ask him to let the children of Israel go to the wilderness for three days. And God says, will not let them, they would not let them go. And then God will work all of these miracles. And then they will go. You got uh, frogs coming out. You got all of this stuff happening. All of that had to happen in order to get Pharaoh's attention. All of that had to do. Do God have to send some frogs in our life to get our attention? Do God have to send some lice up into our house to get our attention? 
Do God have to send all of these various plagues and things to get our attention? Whether we recognize it or not, last year, all just about the whole year, and even now, God is still trying to get our attention. God is still trying to bring us to a place to where we recognize it's not all about the stuff that you think it's about. It's all about God. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and if your faith is not founded upon him, then when the plagues come, when the hard times come, you're not going to know where to go to. But as a child of God, you recognize that I get to run to a rock that is higher than I. I'm talking about the stone that the builders rejected, but he has now become the head of the corner. Verse number three, and number three, in Exodus chapter 4 and verse number 1, it said, Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they won't believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared unto you. Let me, let me break it down. You don't know the Lord. God ain't told you nothing. You ain't no better than me. Why he couldn't come and tell me? Why he had to come and tell you? <laughs> Verses 2 through 9. God gives Moses three signs for the proof that he needs. Now, Moses, I, 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 if me talking out of a bush wasn't good enough, I don't know what's, what it's going to take. If, if that wasn't enough to get your attention, take off thy shoes from off thy feet. From the place where art thou standing is holy ground. Ooh, man, I could, I, could you just imagine being in the very presence of God, so much so you can't even keep your shoes on because the ground is holy ground. Amen. He gives Moses three signs of proof. Number one, his staff turns into a what? Then he picks it back up and it turns right back into a staff. That, that would have been enough. You got me. You got me. But that wasn't enough. His hand turned left. Yes. Right as snow. Lord, you have to do all this. I believed you. When you was talking out the bush, I believed you when the stick turned into a snake. But his hand turned left. And then finally, water poured on land turned into blood. Good God Almighty. All of that. God is showing just what kind of power he really has. And God is letting them know, hey, really, I could snap my fingers and just cause everything to correct like I really want it to be. But so that I can get glory and so that the people coming after will know who to give the glory to, I'm going to take you through it myself so that you have a testimony to somebody else of what it is that God is able to do in your life. You wonder sometimes, Lord, why did I have to deal with that? Why did I have to go through it? Somebody else needs a testimony of what it is that God is able to do in your life. Number four, number four, Moses in Exodus chapter four and verse number 10. Oh, here's my favorite one. Then Moses said to the Lord, oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. I don't know how to cross every T and dot every I. Neither before nor since have I spoken to your servant and I'm slow of speech and I'm slow of tongue. I got a speech impediment. Exodus chapter 4 and verse number 11, the Bible, and verse number 12 says, So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Why you talking all that stuff? I made the very mouth that you speaking with. He said, Or oh, who makes the mute? The deaf? The seeing or the blind? Have not I, the Lord, did all of this? Now, therefore, go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what it is that yes, you need sir. to say. Thank you, Lord. Amen. My God. Y'all, the word of God is powerful. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, sometimes just the very reading of the word of God is enough to bring chill bumps over your body. Amen. Just to see what it is that God is able to do in your life if you will walk with him by faith. Verse, and number five. Exodus chapter 4 and verse number 13, he said, but he said, oh my Lord, 
Please sin by the hand of whomever else you may sin. Now, I, I know it's you because you talked to me out of a bush. I, I know it can't be nobody but you because of the stick and the snake, the leprous hand, the water turned into blood. But still, if you could choose anybody else, he, he don't run out of excuses, do he? He don't get tired of trying to get out of this commitment thing with God. If there's anybody else that you can see in, Lord, please go find them. <laughs> Verses 14 through 17. All Moses' excuses made the Lord angry. Yeah. You know, we make God angry when we walk around here making excuses instead of doing what it is that God has called for us to do. Oh, I can't do it because of that. I can't do it because of this. But then when it comes to things that we're really invested in, and things that we're really interested in, or oh, we man, we'll, oh, we'll call off. We'll, man, we'll, we'll, call, we'll do whatever it is that we, that we have to do in order so that we can be there. But let me tell you, we ought to be that same way with God. The one that wakes us up in the morning, the one that blesses us with all of the things that we enjoy in this life, we ought to be even more committed to him than we are anything else in our life. Yes. Now, in all of Moses' excuses made the Lord angry, but he told Moses he would let his brother Aaron be his spokesperson. Now, I'm not letting you slide. You're still going to do what it is that I asked you to do. But, 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 but I'm, I'm, I'm going to let your brother Aaron be your spokesperson. Verses 18 through 31, we find Moses makes his way to Egypt and Aaron speaks to the children of Israel. Exodus chapter 4, verses 24 to 26, it says, And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Sapphira took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. So he let him go. Then she said, You are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. I cannot tell you in what way God sought to kill Moses and, and cannot tell you which son had not been circumcised. But I can tell you that the reason why God was angry at Moses was because he had not obeyed God's word in reference in circumcising his son. Now, when God tells you to do something, let me tell you, God means exactly what it is that he said. God ain't telling you to take no shortcuts or go around it. He means exactly what it is that he said. And there are some people who think that perhaps uh, Moses didn't circumcise him because his wife did not approve of such things as we see his wife called him a husband of blood. No matter what the reason was, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that he disobeyed God. And because he disobeyed God, God was going to kill him. Moses. Water walking Moses. That man that splits the water. That guy. God was going to kill him. And one lesson we can learn from this, church, is before you go on a mission for God, make sure you got your house in order first. Before you're going to stand up for God, before you're going to speak for God, Make sure you have all those things together in your life that you need to have together so that you can be pleasing with him. So can you just imagine Moses, hey, y'all bring y'all children up here. We got to circumcise. Moses, you ain't did it to your child. Huh. Yeah. Come on now. How, how you going to tell me as the leader, why you going to be trying to tell all these millions of folk out here? How you going to tell all of us that we got to do this and you haven't done the same thing? You need to lead by example, Moses. You need to do what it is that God has called you to do. And when we see the example in you, we'll be glad to follow. Even Moses himself, Moses, the man of God. This very man that we've been talking about that did all of these wonderful things, had all of these wonderful traits, wonderful characteristics, did wonderful things for God, still struggled in certain areas of his life. Moses, and, and, and we'll get to that um, in the coming weeks. But from this, we can see the providence of God in the life of Moses. Yeah. You can see the providence of God in your own life. Yeah. Don't nobody know your story like you know your story. Right. Don't nobody know where you've been, what you've been involved in, the things that you've had to endure. Nobody knows other than you like you. No, no, don't nobody know like I know. That's what we say what the Lord has done for me. And, and, and we recognize that and all of us can see the providence of God in our life. And we can see how God can take this man from the water 
into the house of Pharaoh to being the man that would liberate the people of God. The same one that had a stuttering problem. The same one that said, well, I'm slow of speech. The same one that had all of these excuses and sought every reason he could to get out of it, God used him to do a mighty work for God. God used him to do a great work. And we're, we're going to be studying more about Moses here in the coming weeks. But what I want us to get um, from this tonight is to make sure that you're with God. Make sure that you're with God. Because if you're with God and you have that relationship with him, you got protection. You got guidance. Now, when we try to run all out of bounds and do all this stuff, we, are, we find ourselves out there fending for ourselves. But when you are with God and when you are following God and like Moses, when you are willing to give up on certain things that you really like and really enjoy, when you are willing to give up that stuff just so you can be pleasing to God and just so you can serve God, let me tell you, God will honor your faith and God will bless you for that. Let me tell you, and I say it all the time, God was with Moses. Moses, and we're going to learn about that, we'll talk about that in the coming weeks. Moses didn't know how to get out of Egypt. If, if Moses would have took them, if Moses would have took them, Moses probably would have took them to short route because there was a shorter route through the land of the Philistines. But God didn't want him to take him through the land of the Philistines because the Philistines liked to fight. They had box cutters and, and all kind of switch plays and all these kind of things. And God said, God said, them folk over there, them Philistines, they are some recently emancipated slaves. And I don't want the children of Israel to go through there, not because of the Philistines, but because of the children of Israel. He said, I'm going to take them out of Egypt, but I still got to get Egypt out of them. And God says, I don't want them to get somewhere too soon. I don't want them to get to the promised land and ruin what it is that I have for them. So I take them the long way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe even today, God is taking some of us. My brother, my sister, God's word is true. God is faithful to all of us. And if we remain true to his word, if we serve God in the manner that God has called for us to serve him, we'll live blessed lives. I'm talking about blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going out and blessed coming in when you live faithful to Jesus Christ. And he'll help you to deal with all of the circumstances of life when you truly trust God for your salvation. Maybe someone here, maybe someone watching us here on today um, does not know the Lord as your Savior. You're not a member of the body of Christ. We're just the church of Christ. We invite you to Jesus. We invite you. We extend unto you the Lord's invitation. That is coming to Jesus Christ, laying down the cares of this world, laying down your old self, saying yes to Jesus and walking with him by faith. You do that by hearing his word, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your Savior, being buried with him in baptism, allowing the Lord to add you to his body, and after that, you remain faithful unto death, and he'll give you a crown of life that will never fade away. If you're here, or maybe you're watching us on today, and you're standing in the need of prayer, let us know what it is that you need. Let me tell you, you can never get enough prayer. And I believe all of us, I believe all of us are standing in the need of prayer. If you are if you, uh, standing in need of prayer on tonight, let us know how we can pray for you. Message us, inbox us, comment, let us know, and we'll be glad to pray for you. If you and I are missing you desire prayer, you can do that as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. I need